Hello everyone, Wyatt here once again with another geologic video where I teach you geology. And in this video we're going to be talking about sedimentary rock, and in this video we're going to be talking about the, also the weathering processes which help form types of sedimentary rock. So we have two different types of sedimentary rock that can form, which is called clastic sedimentary rock and biochemical sedimentary rock. Clastic is made up of sediments from other weathered rocks, while biochemical is from different organisms that die off and form deposits. Before we get into sedimentary rocks, let's talk a little bit about weathering, because weathering has a big impact on rock formation over time, as well as tearing down rocks. When it comes to the weathering of rock, there's two different types of weathering, and anything that relates to rock, there seems to be at least two different types. But you have mechanical weathering, and then you have chemical weathering. Now, mechanical weathering is just an outside force that helps break down and weather out the rock, which is usually water, wind, and ice, as well as a couple of different things, as well as trees. One example is glaciers. They are large masses of ice that slowly grind into the mountains. They're kind of like big chisels that carve out valleys and landscapes out of the mountains. And as they go along, they kind of grind up other rocks on the bottom of the glacier. They're kind of like giant pieces of sandpaper and they just kind of grind out mountains and create valley. Another example of ice breaking down rock is called ice wedging. So if you have a crack in a rock, you get water in there and it freezes, ice expands. So if you fill up a bottle, a glass bottle full of water, I don't recommend doing this, and you freeze it, it can shatter and break. So if you have a crack in a rock and water gets in there and it freezes, it can start to open up. And over time, as that gets bigger and bigger, it's kind of like a big wedge and eventually it'll fall off or it'll snap the rock in two. Tree roots also do the same thing. As the tree root grows into the rock crack, it expands and pushes that rock apart. Water is one of the biggest, most powerful forms of mechanical weathering because water carries a lot of sediment and other things in there, and just the power and strength of water can help break down and carve out rock. Examples are like the river going through the Grand Canyon. Now, certain sedimentary rocks, they tend to be a slightly weaker and softer than other rock types. So they're more easily eroded and weathered out, like this conglomerate, for instance. This conglomerate was likely flooded out or carved out this whole cave here um, when flood waters came through here during the Ice Age. Not exactly sure how this formed, but that's probably what it was. As flood waters came racing in here, there must have been a weaker rock that was trapped within this conglomerate that got eroded out by the flood waters. You can see there's a fracture behind me, and that happens to be a fault that cuts through here. Just a little fun little thing that's in here. Then you have chemical weathering, which is the chemical breakdown of rock. For example, if you had a piece of steel, and you threw it outside, and you let it get rained on, over time that steel is going to start rusting. Same things happen to the rock. It's the chemical breakdown of a rock, chemical weathering. So one of the weathering types that can occur on a rock is chemical weathering. As you can see here, this rock was must have been high in iron, and it's rusting and oxidizing out, which slowly breaks down the rock over time. Another example is with limestone. If you have acid rain or just acidic water in contact with limestone as well as marble, it'll start to eat away at the calcium carbonate within the rock and it'll weather it out. So mechanical weathering is a physical force on a rock, while chemical weathering is the chemical process and breakdown of rock. And there's lots of different examples and forms of each. So when rock is weathered and transported, you get what is called unconsolidated sediment, such as gravel and sand or cobbles. So behind me here, you can see we have some sedimentary rock, and you can see all the different layerings going on here. And the layerings are tilted because of tectonics, but as sediments deposit, the ones on the bottom are older and the ones on top are younger. So clastic sedimentary rocks are rocks that form from the sediments of other rocks. Now when looking at sedimentary rocks, clastic sedimentary rocks, they organize them in a couple different ways. So you have poorly sorted sedimentary rock, then you have well sorted sedimentary rock. As you can see here, here's part of the sediment, and you can see it's a very fine grained rock. Then you have other rocks like sandstone, which are also well sorted rocks because Sandstone is mainly made up of gr sand grains that are all roughly the same size. An example of a poorly sorted rock would be like a conglomerate or a breccia. So there's many different types of sedimentary rock based off of their grain sizes and their textures and a couple of other reasons as well. You have coarse grain sedimentary rocks like conglomerate, breccia, then you have kind of medium coarse grain sedimentary rocks like sandstone, then you have finer grained sedimentary rocks like siltstone, mudstone, claystone, and so on, and various other different types not mentioned here. 
So how a sedimentary rock forms is when sediment compacts together in a process called lithification. Now you, you have two different processes that can undergo in lithification, either compaction or cementation. These rocks here are formed from compaction. These were fine grained silts and in some areas there's some sandstone as well. And over time, as the layers built on top of each other, it slowly compacted together. And over time, all that pressure eventually compacted together and formed a rock over a long period of time. So cementation occurs when you have coarse-grained rock and some smaller fine-grained in, in between, and you have water in there as well. And water actually is involved in the formation of a lot of different types of sedimentary rock. But over time, the smaller particles and the bigger particles, as well as the water, they slowly kind of compact together and it almost forms like a glue, and eventually they form a solid rock, kind of like concrete. It's conglomerate, as well as breccia, is kind of like nature's concrete in a way, even though breccia and conglomerate form in two different ways. Conglomerate is formed by water, while breccia is usually formed from angular rock falls, landslides, volcanic activity, fault lines, and so on. So unlike this sandstone, which is a well-sorted sedimentary rock, behind me is another example of sedimentary rock. This would be an example of a poorly sorted sedimentary rock because it has fine grained sediments as well as large uh, cobbles and gravels in it. This is an example of a conglomerate. If you can see here, you have a cobble that's sticking out of the rock here, and you can see where some larger cobbles had already fallen out of the rock, and you have some smaller gravels intermixed with this. So again, this is an example of a poorly sorted sedimentary rock, and this being conglomerate. Now there's another rock that's similar to conglomerate, called breccia. The difference is, is breccia, the fragments of rock in it are not rounded, they're fragmented. Now a conglomerate forms in old riverbeds and streams, and rocks that are in it tumble around, so they become rounded. You can see there's a round cobble in this conglomerate here, so this formed in a river or stream bed a long time ago. As with breccia, the rock fragments are going to be fractured with sharp angles, and breccia usually forms as a result of uh, faulting, landslides, and there's a couple other instances where the rocks break apart and fragment, forming breccia, as conglomerate has round sediment and forms in riverbeds and streams. Now this piece of sandstone, again, is well sorted because all the grains are roughly the same size. You can see it's a nice, even texture all around, as with conglomerate, it is poorly sorted because you have fine grain mixed with larger grained rocks, making it poorly sorted. So at one point, these were unconsolidated sediments within a riverbed or a stream, and uh, over time, due to pressure and just time, uh, these sediments began to combine together like concrete in a process called cementation. What this looks like to me is through here you had just regular kind of runoff through the stream, kind of had some sand, and then probably a flood stage up here because you have some larger cobbles, and then it repeats, and you got more cobble layers, you can see a big stone fell out at one point, and then you got a larger sand layer with more cobble on the ceiling. The other type of sedimentary rock is biochemical. Now biochemical is a sedimentary rock that is made up of usually calcium carbonate or silica, and these form from marine life. An example of this is limestone. Now there are actually several different variants of limestone. You have limestone that is made up of shells, then you have more of a finer grain limestone. But limestone is made up of calcium carbonate. There's another example of biochemical rock called chert. Chert is formed from microscopic marine organisms, but instead of making their shells from calcium carbonate, they make their shells from silica. So it creates a layer of chert, usually, which can be in a couple different colors and variants. So here we have an example of two sedimentary rocks. One is clastic and one is biochemical. One being limestone and the other just a regular sedimentary clastic rock of a certain kind. Now it can be hard to tell, so one way to help is to use uh, an acid, because acid will break down limestone. So I have some hydrochloric acid, we'll put a little bit on here. And as you can see, it immediately foams up and starts sizzling on the rock. So limestone is a biochemical rock. And this is why limestone is easily eroded by acidic water, which makes cave systems and weathers out the rock over time. Weathering has a big importance on the creation of clastic sedimentary rock as well as soils to make different 
rocks eventually over time. So this was a video on the weathering and the creation and formation of sedimentary rocks. I hope you found this interesting. If you want to learn more, I'll hopefully have some more links in the description if you're interested in learning more about sedimentary rock. Eventually I'll have more geologic videos where I explain and teach more about geology, so there'll be more coming out in the future. But this will be it for now. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all later. Take care.